What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news. A new question concerning Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder now. Um, we just heard the big news, huge news in the sport of boxing. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua have agreed to a two-fight deal next year. Okay. Now they're supposed to fit Dillian White in there, which would be smart. But who are we overlooking? Deontay Wilder. Why would Tyson Fury already have a deal signed to fight Anthony Joshua without winning the fight with Deontay Wilder? So it, it, it comes down to respect, right? It comes down to, or should I say disrespect? He doesn't respect. It's disrespectful to Deontay Wilder. And it shows confidence. It shows that he's confident that he's going to beat the Bronze Bomber. Now, in this video, he did say, that the Bronze Bomber was the roadblock, was the person standing in the way of this deal. I get that. But then this shows a lot of confidence and ill regard to Deontay Wilder. He has that third fight. So we let, let's analyze what's going on, okay? I saw that fight. The rematch between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. I've saw it maybe a dozen times now. And believe it or not, what people don't realize about Deontay Wilder in that fight, he actually improved. Let me explain. The first fight, how long did it take him to catch him with a right hand? And when I mean him, I mean Tyson Fury. How long did it take Deontay Wilder to catch Tyson Fury with that right hand to drop him for the first time in that fight. Nine rounds. Nine rounds it took him, okay? He tried to finish in the 12th, but almost close, but no cigar. Tyson Fury got up, and they went and continued the rest of the fight. Great 12th round. Uh, ninth round was the, the, the opening savior point for Deontay, I feel. And he caught him, and it was almost like magic. It was almost like, hey, I hit that target. I got him where I needed him. He, he got hit. He fell. He caught him again, and he hurt him really bad in the 12th, I feel, with the right hand, and he followed up with a left hook. And I think that was kind of like the finishing point with that fight because Wilder was been, he, Wilder been looking for that punch all night, and he couldn't find it. Okay, that's the first fight. This rematch, the second fight, Wilder was able to do that shit in the first round. So that's why he improved. He was already able to get off that right hand. You know, since people, what people don't understand, since Tyson Fury came in with a hard jab, because see, Tyson Fury was no longer, you know, just flicking jabs. He wasn't doing the flicking jab deal a lot, unless Wilder was in the corner. But he would come in strong. And Wilder is good with countering the one special move that he has over the jab because that's the counter. Jab, counter. Okay. He was able to do that in the first round and the second round. But what was the difference? What was the big defining difference between that the second fight and the first fight? The second fight, he was able to hit him, hit that target, okay, Catch Fury upside the head, that temple area. He was able to touch him. But what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. Tyson Fury caught that hit. He took that punch and he kept coming. That was the defining factor. So you have to factor in the fact that Tyson Fury does not respect Deontay Wilder's punching power no more. Was it underrated? You know, you can think about how he caught other fighters. You can think about the Spilka knockout. You can think about the Dominic Brazil knockout. You can think about the Luis Ortiz knockout. 
You can think about these knockouts, and if we analyze that, the guy that got the shittiest end of the stick, it was Spilka. Spilka had to be stretch, carried out on the stretcher, right? Um, Dominic Brazil, he got up, but, you know, the way he went down, the referee could have looked at that and be like, you know, nah. You know, I mean, he counted, but then Dominic Brazil was on his way up. Now, I don't know what type of condition he was in, and it's fair to say he would have took out Dominic Brazil, you know, with a combination windmill, you know, six-piece, all swings, you know, no sides, windmill to Deontay Wilder, which he's classic for. I think he would have took him on out, right? Maybe he ended with an uppercut like he did the first Luis Ortiz fight, maybe, but... He wasn't clearly knocked out, okay? Like he, you know, it was more, it, it was considered a KO due to the fact he didn't beat the count and he wasn't, he didn't, his legs weren't, weren't under him. Luis Ortiz got caught with a certain, with a similar punch. It's just, I think Luis Ortiz didn't anticipate him throwing that right at that time. You know, Luis Ortiz, he heard that third, that 10 second bell. He heard that, he heard that. And then what, what happened? He got caught. And it was at the very end of that round, okay? It was similar to when he got caught in the fifth, but this was a this was a punch right in the face, okay? But Ortiz was down there a while, okay? He was. He kind of pondered a little bit and kind of wondered, you know, you know, donde, donde estoy? <laughs> donde estoy? He was wondering where the hell he was at for a while, but he did get up. Now, a lot of people complained that the, the count was fast. I really didn't see that. Because Kenny Bayless is um, is a fast counting fighter. He's an intense. I mean, referee. He he he's an intense referee. So he's in every particular thing. Now, but he's still on his way up. You know, you know, Ortiz was still. You could tell he was still out of it to a degree. But was he able to fight? You know, and, and for that reason, since it was at the end of that particular fight or round, it was at the end of that round. I think they should have gave him the benefit of the bout, but there is no, there is no, you can't be saved by the bell, okay? And they stopped the fight. But was he knocked out? Like, was he, like, he wasn't like Spilka. So the two guys that Deontay Wilder's resume really resides on is Dominic Brazil and then Luis Ortiz, okay? Of course, he's fought Fury, but he's never officially beat Fury. But the question you ask yourself, how many people that he knocked out, knock out with that particular defining power? It shows you that if Wilder, he was able to close the gap. He was able to hit Tyson Fury the way, I mean, it was, it, it was a hard blow. You know, maybe Fury, you know, had enough experience to go with it or whatnot. But the thing is, is to me, it came off as though Wilder was able to, to catch Fury because he's already been acquainted with Fury. Catch him with that quick right hand over the jab, which he did. He initiated that punch. Fury just took it and kept going. I think this has a lot to do with the reason why they're looking past Deontay Wilder, and there's no doubt about it. They're looking past Wilder, people. They're looking past Deontay Wilder because they know now, I can take Wilder's punch, but can he take mine? That, that's what this is about. That's why he's looking past him. Because he knew. He knows. I can take out Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's punching power is underrated. He did say that. He said that in earlier times. He said, well, hey, he ain't going to knock me out. I think Klitschko hits harder than him anyway. He didn't knock me out. Right? Well, yeah, Deontay Wilder caught me some good shots. But you know Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's the type of dude... He will give you props, and then at the same time, he'll turn around and scald you and do something opposite of giving you props. You like shit on all of your ability. Because at one point, he did say, Deontay Wilder is the hardest punching person in, in boxing history. No doubt about it. Right? Because he was selling that rematch. Okay, now, you know, in between that rematch, the buildup built and built and built and built. He starts saying things like, Deontay Wilder is not the hardest hitting puncher that he's been in the ring with. You know what I mean? And it's what has been confirmed by action is the fact that Deontay Wilder was able to catch that target with that special right hand that he has with the power, with the magic, with the God-gifted uh, 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 strength that he had, and nothing happened. Okay? 
did you see Fury buckle at any time in the rematch? That's the question you ask yourself. Did you see Fury affected in any type of way? It's almost like he got caught with that shot and he wanted more. I want to feel that punch and power, Deontay. I want to feel your power. I want to see all that power. You remember the first fight he was saying that? It was almost in the second fight he was getting caught. And he got caught not the first, not the first round, not the second round, but he definitely got caught both rounds. Both. And he was not able to buckle Tyson Fury. He was not able to do any kind of effect to Tyson Fury like that punch supposed to have created. That punch that he hit Tyson Fury with was supposed to have done something else other than Tyson Fury uh, um, keep put touching his nose and coming forward. He's supposed to be on the ground, man. And it didn't happen. And I think this has a lot to do with the disrespect or the, or the no regard to Deontay Wilder's punching power. So I think Tyson Fury is convinced that he can take Deontay Wilder's power, that Deontay Wilder will be an easy knockout, that he's already making um, decisions and commitments to his next two other fights. So that's my question, man. You know, Deontay Wilder was able to hit him with those punches. He wouldn't fold. He didn't buckle. He didn't fall, right? So what do you really think Tyson Fury's um, motive is to make these two fights are about over the fact that he has to fight Deontay Wilder the third time? You guys tell me what you think. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunching. Peace.